breaking news. Um, hello, gorgeous. That wasn't the breaking news because you already knew you were gorgeous. Lady Gaga and Bruno Mars have produced a musical child together. Well, it's been out over a week, but I'm slow in many ways. More of a cracking news as opposed to a break. And I was about to click on it. I was, this is a reenaction. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. I saved it so we could enjoy it for the first time together. I highly approve this union on paper. I think they are both the absolute pinnacle of what it means to be a pop star. Both of them are not afraid to reinvent themselves. They have taken on completely different characters as artists over the years. And that really gave a musical peasant like myself permission to be bold. I am definitely a braver, bolder musical peasant when I make my own songs, which you can listen to if you want. Yeah, where they go. Because of them. But if you're gonna listen to my music, don't listen to it immediately before or after this, because it's not fair. Go and make a cup of tea, do something tedious, and then listen to my music so it has half a chance. <laughs> uh... The beady-eyed among you may recognize this shirt from my first Bruno Mars analysis. It's my Bruno shirt. Now it's my Lady Bruno shirt. Just have an apricot for good vibes. And it's called Die With A Smile. It's a strange image, because I'm picturing, you know when people die in movies and it's really slow, and they're usually like, like this. If I picture them like this, <laughs> that's actually quite scary. I suppose dying with a smile is better than dying without one. Maybe, I don't know. Just woke up from my dream Where you and I had to say goodbye mm. And I don't know what it all means But since I survived I realized Oh, very nice Wherever you go, that's where I'll follow Nobody's promised tomorrow Because you know sometimes love songs either sound cliche or just too random and weird. Like I was just thinking this morning as I was driving here, that song where, uh, what's he called, Ed Sheeran. Like the Ed Sheeran song where he goes, when your legs don't work like they used to before and I can't pick you up, will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? <laughs> you mean taste someone's love in your m Oh, okay. Surely he can't mean that. I'll love you until you're 70. Paraphrasing. That's not even old. <laughs> like, I'm sure her legs are gonna be fine at 70. I do really like Ed Sheeran, but those lyrics are just, they rub me up the wrong way. This, however, is so sophisticated. He's actually telling a very specific visual story. It's not just an, arbitrary thought process about how much he loves this person and they want to be together forever and whatever. There's so much imagery. You've got the world ending, which is an image. You've got the image of him waking up suddenly from a dream and realizing that it was just a dream. He hasn't forced any of the rhymes. It's not like, I just woke up from a dream. I'm lucky I didn't scream. I go to put on my cream. I realize that I fished some bream. You can tell that I forced that. If you couldn't, I did. But this is completely flowy. None of the lines work on their own. Each one is a continuation of the one before. Fabulous! The vocal everything 
about this is magnificent. I love to bits that really drastic delay that they put on that <laughs> at the beginning. Because it made one vocal line harmonise with itself. <laughs> that was really very clever. And again, elegant. I love the little semi tone minor second interval when he says that we had to say goodbye. Goodbye. A little bit of mild threat. It still works nicely in the chords. Just a little. Talking of sitting nicely in the chords, we have a whole world of sevenths. And what that means, my fairy folk, is the chord that he starts with is A major. Except it's not. He has an extra note called the seventh. Uh. And the addition of this seventh always makes a dreamy sound. It gives you a sense of unresolvedness. We're hanging on because home is so close by. And to make sure that we really know he's in a dream, those seventh chords don't leave us. The next one is a seven, then we come back to that seven. Oh my gosh, I just realized. So you know how the first time he does that melody? It's you and I had to say goodbye. We sit here. It's a nice cozy third. Goodbye. But the second time he does that same melody, we don't get a new chord, but we don't get the chord we're expecting. He just doesn't change the chord. But since I survived, I realized. I realized. That note is now the seventh, extra dreamy, without actually changing anything. It's just a rearrangement. Oh my gosh. That is so classy. Simple enough so that we enjoy it, but it's intricate enough to make us feel something different. Like we don't hear this every day, unless you listen to Stevie Wonder every day because he's really good at that. <laughs> mm. I love the chorus melody as well. I love how the die is really surprising, but not surprising because it's Bruno Mars. But I mean, like, if it was anyone else, you would expect something like, I wanna hold you for a while and die with a smile. You know, it would have still been sweet and romantic, but no, <laughs> we have no less than, I wanna hold you for a while. So we're here. Wow, and <laughs> we jump up the whole octave. Die with a smile. Because he can. And that is why it's so cool to train your voice because you don't need to whip all the tools out of the shed just willy nilly. But if you do want a specific tool and you don't have it, sometimes it can mean more averageness and blendy in this for your song. But if you do have it, then you are free to whip it out at any moment. So now I assume we're gonna hear from Lady Gaga, or should I say Dolly Parton. I don't think we need to be too concerned about the cigarette because it doesn't look like she's actually smoking it. She's just sort of holding it betwixt her teeth. Much sexier than that, obviously. Next oh, she's taking it out. It's so weird looking at her mouth say these words and know that this is absolutely nothing like the mouth shape that would have been required to sing this. I don't know if you feel that. I don't mean you have to f gurn or anything, but there is no way that that volume 
could come out of an environment that has like no visible pressure in it at all. It would kind of be an enhanced version of the mouth shapes that she's doing at the moment. And our love's the only one worth fighting for. Yeah, there'd be something. This is an absolutely incredible vocal performance. No easy way outs, everything is full. Warm. And tingly. Yeah. Oh. oh my goodness, there's a bunch of mannequins in the audience. Say it ain't so. Good heavens. That was a very high note. And die! <laughs> Them hitting these notes, respectively, die, die, is so luscious. They are both right towards the top of their respective ranges in terms of what they can do strong. So if you think about your nice, strong talking voice, as opposed to this voice that we can do where it goes thin and delicate. Well, the difference between those two voices is a little muscle called the cricothyroid muscle that thins out and elongates those vocal folds. And when we do this voice, the muscle that kept our voice nice and chunky and speechy has left the chat. And so when I mean that they're both at the top of their respective belty strong ranges, I mean both of them still have engagement from this TA muscle, from their speechiness. So it isn't da and it's and da. When you hear people say people's voices blend together, what we're talking about here is timbre, the size and the shape of the instrument affecting the quality of that frequency. And so for example, a tiny baby crying has a tiny little teeny weeny bambini voice. And so when that voice happens, it's very high and shrieky. Bruno Mars and Lady Gaga with their nice, big, thick voices, stretching them out. It's a whole lot of love and complementary frequencies. They both divulge in quite similar nuances as well, like they love a bit of growl here and there. So usually when two voices blend well to create one super silky voice, like what Lady Bruno has done here, it means that they are not entirely dissimilar anatomically and functionally, generally. I wanna be next to you. There's that thin sound. Ooh. Oh, and now they're both doing it. Not anymore. <laughs> Aww. So when they both are in that, what we call mode two dominant, where the vocal folds are thin, Their voices blend really well there as well because they're both in the same mode. Right next to you. Blendy wendy voice smoothie. If Lady Gaga stayed there and Bruno Mars did right next to you with all of that weight and fullness, not the same. And it's more than just volume. It's the actual quality of the voice, the voice technique that they're using. She is singing with a cigarette after all.
leave them. The unison at the end. Did you hear how they sang the same note? And did you hear how their voices are super, super similar? They both sang, I wanna be next. And then she broke off to, to you. But in that moment where they were singing the exact same frequency, so the same pitches and the same octave, it's actually really difficult to distinguish either one of their voices. Maybe it's just one of them. <laughs> that would be very difficult to distinguish in that case, wouldn't it? But I don't think so. I think they were both singing that. Ooh. I have other work tasks to do, but I'm just not done. I'm not done. There's too much. Oh, they'll have to wait. I never pass up an opportunity to look deep inside Bruno Mars's mouth, including this one. It's spacious. Isn't it spacious? Look how he prepares. Oh, he's got so much mobility in his jaw. Can you see that? Can you, if you try and do that now, like just copy his face and go. You'll feel like a basking shark. You will feel strange. We don't open our mouths this wide for <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. However, it is very important. Often, if you want to play this instrument properly, like if you want to get certain resonances and certain notes, you have to mobilize your jaw. You need space in your mouth. You need your soft palate to lift. It needs to resonate. Otherwise, it'd be like, which sounds like, if you're into that, Fine, but you're not, are you? You have to make sure that you're in the right position to allow those muscles to work properly. For example, if you try and open your mouth without moving this top part of your face, you won't get very far. You'll feel like your jaw's stuck. But if you tilt your head back, lift your, <laughs> scrunch your nose to bear your upper teeth. How many aerobics in here? So many activities. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. So that's why you see a lot of this scrunching. Never skip levator labi superioris aliquae nasi muscle day, kids. Something that really helps mobilize this area and get you in the right position is an emphatic, slightly aggressive meow sound. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. That meow sequence of vowels and henceforth shapes in the face will really help you train this and get used to this uncomfortable feeling of pythonness. Are they the snakes that swallow huge things? Yeah, that's you now. Lady Gaga has a very warm, generous spirit about her. I can't really put my finger on it. She's done so many collaborations over the years. There's Beyonce, Ariana Grande, more. Every time I've seen her with another artist, she just looks so adoring and respectful of them. Just full commitment to everything that she does. So if we know that two of the biggest pop stars of our generations are making a song together, we obviously have high expectations and they have really met them. Really, really, really. The song honestly sounds like a quintessential Bruno Mars song. So I think probably what happened is it's something that he started and then Lady Gaga just came in and blessed everything with her general fabulousness. Thankfully, it is absolutely by no means just something that they've decided to pull out their ass to stay relevant. It's not radio fodder. Composed and performed by absolute masters of their craft. And I'm so glad that we got to watch it together. Um, you've probably already seen it, but oh well, we still saw it together. Let me read out today's Oracle card before you pop off. Today, my gorgeous fairy folk, we have, this won't be forever, we can do this. The hamster of hope. What is hope? Hope is an energy that gets us to where we need to be. It actually doesn't matter if we get the outcome we hoped for. Hope just holds us safely and keeps us in a positive mindset. Hope reminds us that miracles happen. I think they very much do, you know. I really believe in miracles. Honestly, the fact that you managed to sit here for however long I've just been speaking and you're still here listening to my bollocks is a miracle to me. And thank you for giving me that miracle. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. If there is any music or any singers that you would like to see me analyze here, then please do let me know down below on the 
comments or in the comments and you can also pop over to patreon if you would like to join our community where song requests get processed faster and i share exclusive content if we're together at the premiere then a ginormous premiere hug for you and if you're here at any other time here is a ginormous hug for you i love you and i hope you have an absolutely terrific day i'll see you next time oh and by the way i would love you if your legs didn't work like they used to before, and if the world was ending. So, anyway, bye.